Yeah, Coach, good morning to you. Good morning. I was just curious if you might be able to take us through um, the uh, five newcomers, the uh, Tyler, Day Day, Robert, uh, McCaleb, and Arthur. Um, okay, so Tyler, big time winner, uh, JUCO National Championship, NIT Championship, MVP at the NIT, two conference championships at North Texas. And he might be a better person than he is a player. Uh, just got a smile on his face, great energy. Um, real excited to have him. He's going to do um, uh, I take on a, a lot of leadership role because of his experience and and just his personality. And uh, excited about him, uh, Arthur. You know, obviously, a big time get for us, man. And. Uh, Transfer from Creighton, two NCAA tournaments in the Elite Eight last year. Um, I mean, could be in the Final Four for a call at the end of the game, you know. Um, so, uh, you know, just love the fact that he's won at a high level and, you know, just cares about winning, extremely versatile. Um, can play multiple positions, can score from a, in a variety of ways, uh, a versatile defender and, um, uh, rebounds to basketball. Um, then our three freshmen, you know, Dede, man, Dede came in, his, his body, I mean, he is in shape. Uh, he is a hard worker. He's got a lot of stuff to his game. Um, but like with all three of these guys, they're freshmen, so it's going to take him a little time, but excited about Dede. Uh, buddy, Buddy um, is a physical specimen, uh, got a lot of gifts and talents, uh, really um, working real hard to, to get himself in, in college basketball shape, which is a lot different, but man, another great worker and just a, a fun kid to be around, man. Um, and then RJ obviously is a gifted score, um, played at a high level. Um, you know, with all three of these guys, there's an adjustment period that's going to take place, but um, RJ is the kind of kid that, you know, he could play, you know, 10 minutes and, and have nine points because he's such a gifted shooter and scorer. And so uh, excited about all five of those guys. And, uh, you know, um, they, they fit in well with the other guys and they're working really hard right now. Tom, you're on mute. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, next question to Karen Kranaki. Coach. Hi, Karen. What a pleasure to meet you, finally. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. The NBA draft tonight, can you talk about where you'll be watching it and any words of wisdom to Keontae? Um, just, you know, it, it's got to be a stressful yet exciting night for him. Uh, yeah, well, I haven't, we haven't quite decided where we're going to watch it, debating whether... Um, to bring the guys in or not uh, do it at, I mean, like at somebody's house or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so uh, it is a, it's exciting and stressful for all of us. I mean, you know, but I, knowing Keontae and the kind of person that he is, uh, he was extremely thankful for the opportunity he had last year. And I expect him to, you know, the same this year uh, and what's going on right now that he is going to be thankful that he's in this position and whoever calls his name, he's going to be extremely thankful for that. And, um, and I guarantee you that whoever calls his name will be a year from now being very thankful they picked him because uh, he's just uh, a terrific human being and uh, is a, an excellent basketball player. Reports say that he's been working extremely hard and just killing it in some of the, um, combines or workouts for teams um have you heard from any of the teams do you have any feel at all where he might go and who might be interested in him uh I have heard from several teams uh I don't have a clue there's a few that are like a little bit more interested than others but that really doesn't mean anything in with the draft because of trades that are going to take place because some people put out false information to throw you off the track, you know, I mean, there's so much gamesmanship going on on game day, you know, other than with probably the top three drafts picks, um, there's a lot of 
uh, movement that takes place. And so um, I, I just know that wherever he ends up, they're getting a terrific player who can play multiple positions and is going to be able to impact winning right away. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. Thank you, Karen. Thanks, Karen. We'll go to TJ Cleland next. Hey, Coach, with the, the draft tonight, I was just wondering, you know, whenever you got to campus and whenever you first got Keontae to campus, just did you see these guys and kind of think that, you know, they could be NBA players or they kind of developed into that? Just I know you were high on them when they got here. Just what, what's your thoughts on that? Well, man, I, I thought, uh, you know, we had a couple all-conference guys um, on the roster. And if you're all an all-conference player in the Big 12, uh, you got you can you can play in that league, and so um, you know the fact that they were both all Americans and you know that that's just a credit to them and their hard work. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I, you didn't think about the NBA draft, and and that's I think that's what was great about these guys. They were just focused on being the best version of themselves here for Kansas State, and when you focus on the moment, you stay in the moment, and you work real hard. These type of opportunities come down the road. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, TJ. Uh, next question to Michael Goins. Hello, oh, Coach. Trust you're doing well. Good morning, Michael. Uh, can you speculate as far as your current team, what kind of uh, backcourt component you anticipate for the upcoming season? Uh, Man, uh, the, the, what, this is what I feel about my team right now. I'm not, not positive about it, but I, I feel like we have the talent to have an NCAA tournament team, but our margin for error right now is very small. And so the, the goal is to add a couple more guys that's going to give us a, a bigger margin for error that's going to you know, add some more firepower to, to the roster. Um, uh, Tyler and Cam are working extremely hard and they're, they're both like Cam's going to have a terrific year. And so, um, but it, it would be nice to not have to put the type of pressure right now that I see that we will be putting on, on our young guys. Um, if we can get another older guard in there and that, that'll free up the young guys just to let their talent take over and not have to worry about, you know, game management and carry the load that kind of thing. And we've heard good reports about Cam Carter in the off season. Can you speak to the progress he made from November through March and where he's gone from, from that point and what you anticipate through November and next March? Mm. Um, well, Cam, you know, Cam just need to play, right? You need to be able to have the freedom to play and to play through mistakes because at Mississippi State, when he played, uh, I think it was 20 or more minutes, they were like eight and one. And uh, I mean, he put up good numbers. And so um, I thought we saw that he might have been a little inconsistent, you know, um, but that happens uh, when in your first opportunity. Um, having seen these guys of, in front of him leave, Cam has really taken on uh, the responsibility of leadership and uh, recognizes that this is his opportunity and he is working extremely hard to be ready for it. And so uh, I anticipate him ha being an impact guy and having a great year. And last one for me, do you feel like you've kind of got your program set with, with one season in the books and that you've got a few more returners from last season that there's a little better feel for what you might have coming upcoming this season? Man, I don't know if it's a better feel for what's coming. I just, I know that what we believe in and we got to fight for it every single day because success sometimes uh, breeds complacency and uh, we don't want to be complacent. We don't want to relax. We don't want any slippage in what we do. And, uh, you know, we're not going to sneak up on anybody this year. And so we, we have to take on that challenge. And it, it's, it starts with what you do going one and oh in every aspect of the day. And so just really as a staff and as a team, we're really fighting hard to make sure that we don't have a letdown. Thank you, Trump. Thank you. 
Uh, next question to Kellis Robinette. Hey, Jerome, can you tell me what you've uh, noticed at an Aquan since he's been back on campus and has he changed it all as a player after going through the NBA draft experience? Um, you know, you could see the confidence level raise. Uh, he realizes that he's um, that he's capable of playing at that le that level and and having an impact, and so um, the and and then he's uh, building better habits. You know, he's more consistent in his work ethic, understanding that he's been given a couple of things that he's got to get better at, and there's there's been a, a major focus for him on trying to figure that out, and uh, so. You know, I, I I like the maturity that I'm seeing, and uh, looking looking forward to. I mean, this is a long summer, and just wanting to see it every day, and and hopefully get him to put his arms around a young guy and help bring him along also. And also, now that you've landed two transfers, you got two spots left open. Have your recruiting has your recruiting wish list changed at all with those last two spots? No, not at all. Uh, we we're locked in on what we want. The type of people and uh, the type of players, and uh, we're gonna get it done. And but if we don't sign anybody else, uh, I feel like we got a group that that can get us to the NCAA tournament. But our goal is not the NCAA tournament, so uh, we're gonna keep grinding and turning over every rock to make sure that we can find the right guys. And uh, ideally, a guard and a big. Is that what you're thinking? Uh, definitely a guard, and then the best available player after that. Okay, gotcha. All right, thanks, Jerome. No problem. Thanks, Kellis. Uh, next question to Arnie Green. Yeah, I wanted to uh, ask you about uh, about the red shirt guys, uh, Jarrell and uh, and Taj, and uh, just what kind of progress you've seen out of them, and do you expect them to be able to to contribute uh, immediately for you this year? Or? Uh, yeah, you know. Um, Taj did such a great job last year as a red shirt and uh, competing every day at practice and uh, helping uh, us get better. And so uh, I hope he continues that, that workman like mindset through this summer and uh, it'll put him in position to compete for minutes. Um, but like with anything, if you're relying on a red shirt freshman to provide um, impact, then you're probably not going to be as good as you want to be. So, um, you know, I, I tell our guys all the time, my job is to bring in dudes that's going to keep you on the bench. Your job is to make sure it doesn't happen. And so um, that that's where we're at there. Jarrell has made huge strides. I mean, he was already a, a talent and his body has changed. His mindset is, is changing. And I expect him to play uh, minutes for us this year and impact winning and uh, I, I don't want the pressure or the burden to be on him to to do be everything for us on that defensive end. Um, so I hope we can provide him with some help around him so that he can grow naturally and uh, continue to gain confidence in what he's doing. So uh, please, please with with Jarrell, man, he's been he's been uh, I, I wouldn't say surprised, but it, it's been very pleasant to see his progress. With Taj, what? Uh... What positions do you see him fitting in? I know he's, uh, you talked a lot about his rebounding, but he's also not the the biggest guy necessarily. Uh, size doesn't dictate uh, the ability to rebound. And uh, yeah. it's it's about will, effort, you know, tenacity. And Taj has those things. And so um, and for, uh, what I'm telling Taj is don't worry about positions. There's only two positions really he should worry about is on the floor or on the bench. And so, um, you know, he, he's trying to be one of those on the floor guys. Also, want to ask you about the schedule. Uh, they just announced the opening the season with USC, uh, and uh, want to talk a little bit about that, and possibly also maybe uh, the Israel trip. Just what, uh, maybe a little bit of your thoughts on that one. Um, I like our schedule right now as as it is. We still have to add a couple of games. Um, opening night in Vegas. I mean, who could beat that, right? That's, uh, I think our fans would be excited <laughs> about coming out and seeing that. And, uh, you know, it's going to be, it's being built as Bronny James's first game. And so there's going to be a lot of 
uh, media and build up to it. And so I know our guys are going to be excited to play that game. Uh, as for the trip to Israel, really a once in a lifetime opportunity, man. And uh, I'm so excited for our guys. I'm excited for the learning experience we're going to have in the build up to the trip. And then uh, the life experience we're going to gain on the trip. We get to play three basketball games while we're over there and have 10 days of practice before we go. And that's going to help us. But the chemistry you know, the, the team building opportunities and just, just the opportunity to see a different part of the world and that we've read about or heard about, uh, but to actually be there and walk there and experience it is going to be incredible. And I know you didn't have a whole lot of control of this over the schedule last year because it was pretty much set. Did you feel like you needed to, to upgrade it a little bit? It, it seems like you've got, got maybe a little bit stronger schedule this year. Yeah, um, you know what? Uh, I thought our schedule was was fine last year. Uh, I was very thankful for the job that the, the last staff did in putting it together. And I mean, the one game we added last year was Cal and they didn't turn out to be as strong at the end of the year, a team as they were projected to be. So um, no, hats off to the, the last group that put together. We My goal was to um, play some high major teams on the road this upcoming year so that then we could make have them return home games to Bramlage the following year um because our fans in the non-conference deserve to have um really good teams come into Bramlage and uh be be able to experience that type of environment not just during the Big 12. Thanks appreciate it. No problem thank you. Uh next question to Tim Iverson. Hey, Coach, how are you doing? Doing well. How are you doing, Tim? I'm doing pretty good. Hey, I uh, saw that Nate Aubrey had been moved over to being a grad assistant. But what was kind of the process and in, in, in making that happen? And how easy of a decision was that for you to keep him around? Uh, it might have been the easiest decision of the summer, man. Just uh, um, seeing what he added, the value he added to our team last year and the type of person that he was. And uh, just asked him what his career goal was. and he told me and and I, you know, it was real, real, very simple, very simple. And then uh, how, how big of a jump or do you kind of expect David to make going into uh, going into a senior season? Uh, well, I definitely expect there to be a jump and, you know, David still has two years. And so um, I expect there to be a jump. The, the two things that are going to hopefully knocking on wood here that um, we're going to uh, add to that. Uh, just the fact that he will be able to spend the whole summer with us. Um, last year, he ha went had to go back home for a visa issue, and it took him a while to get back. So he missed a large portion of the summer with Phil and strength, conditioning, skill, to just, just all that. And then he had the injury during the season that, you know, it took a while for him to come back. And so if we can avoid those two things, that, that's going to naturally give you a jump there. And, and I believe that um, his confidence, because he works so hard, right? Like, I mean, he's in the gym early in the morning. He's back at night. He's doing a great job working that his confidence level should be through the roof um, as he um, tries to implement the things that he's been working on. And then do you have a, a timeline at all? I know with, with, with Coach Sutton, leaving you, you have a spot open on the staff. Do you have a timeline that you want to fill fill that spot or is that a later down the road deal? Yeah, um, no timeline. Uh, you know, we're examining the program and figuring out what the need is. And, um, you know, whether, you know, you know, it's when you lose a guy like Kevin Sutton, it's, it's a big loss. And so um, it usually takes more than one person to fill that role. And so I'm blessed that we had Anthony Winchester here to, uh, be able to uh, move him up and give him more responsibilities because uh, he's such an asset. And now it's about figuring out, do we fill that role with one person or two people? Do we, you know, I, I don't, uh, I'm not quite sure yet. Uh, would like to have it, you know, sometime by July so that we can start building some chemistry. The, the good thing is having those 10 practices, as long as they're here by the end of July and we can start working together on game-like situations. I think that's gonna gonna help us. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. 
Uh, next question to Derek Young. Hey, Coach. Uh, just just touching on what you just said about Coach Winchester. What kind of was the motivations, or what has he done to really prove to earn that new responsibility? Um, man, we we got an hour to talk about A Dub. You know, I mean, he's he's uh he, he's gifted, man. God, his life experience. Um, his experience as a player, the success that he had, uh, his demeanor, uh, how he delivers the message. Um, he sees the game a little bit differently uh, um, fr from from his experiences. Um, man, he's it, it dubs just a sharp, sharp guy. Man, his his um, career path is gonna like shoot like he can, he'll go as far as he wants to go and do anything he wants to do in the game of basketball um because he's connects with people and he you know he loves guys and he, he just he really uh cares about the game has a, has a good eye offensively about how to pick on things and um and then wants to help younger guys develop and not just players but our gas and the guys under him and because of his career path um, and so, uh, I, I'm just blessed, man. We were blessed to have guys, um, you know, and they say, you know, across college basketball, your head coach and your one through three, they're all pretty equal. It's the guys under that, that people don't see your plus twos and ops and GAs. Those are the ones that make the difference. And we got elite dudes underneath and, uh, that are, that could be elsewhere on the floor, coaching, doing other things. And but they're willing to be here and, and be a part of this program and uh, play a significant role in what we do. And then what was the connection between the program and Arthur or what resonated with him to kind of make that a one visit recruitment? And then he's locked up for you guys. Mm, and you have to ask Arthur that. Yeah. Uh, but, but I know that was the goal. <laughs> we, didn't to, we didn't want to leave campus. <laughs> So I don't know if it's what I told him I was going to put him in a chokehold until he, you know, submitted or not let him get back in the car. <laughs> no, um, you know, we, you know, anybody who's been around our, our staff and our guys, you know, and just the, the, there's a special bond and chemistry that we have here that, um, you know, the right people, re it resonates with them. And, Arthur cared about the right things and it resonated with him and him and his family. Um, very um, godly people who cared about their son being in an environment where he was going to be uh, built up and confidence was going to be poured into him, but yet held accountable. And so, um, you know, I think that that was the, the thing. But our guys, best thing about our program are our players and the fact that our guys got to be here and spend time with him. Uh, I think that that sold it. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Derek. Uh, next question to Vince. Hey, Coach, really quick. I know we've been you know, talking about a lot of great things here. From your time in Baylor and obviously now, you know, your first year at, at K-State, what's the advice that you give the players, you know, that, that go through the draft process and, and stick with that draft process and what did you say to Marquise and, and Keontae and maybe, you know, at your time at Baylor, what have you told players, you know, as they go through that process or the, the advice that you give them? Well, you know, it's two things, like two parts to this process. For, one is the workouts, right? And I mean, you just can't, there's, there's, a, there's a different level of conditioning that you have to have in the NBA uh, that, I mean, and so the number one thing I tell them is when you go into those workouts, you, you got to be in, in the best shape of your life and even more than you thought you needed to be. Um, and so I thought both of those guys approached that well uh, this year from the feedback that I got that, that they were in shape and they were, were very, very competitive in every workout that they had. Um, and then after that, man, you know, whether – somebody calls your name or not you don't need all 30 teams to love you right you just need one you know and you you get the one team that loves you and, and then you're there so you know, don't worry about all the other stuff just 
focus, control what you could control and enjoy this process because not everybody gets to go through. That's all I need, Coach. Thanks so much. No, no, thank you. Uh, next question, Elaine Gerber. There we go. Hey, Coach. I was just wondering Thanks. how much you've talked to Marquise through his process and what it's been like for him just constantly trying to show these teams that he is an NBA caliber player. Uh, Keith and I talk often, um, you know, he's traveling a lot and, you know, I'll catch him in the airport for a few minutes here and there. Um, I, I really been pounding Keith to help me with recruiting. So, um, <laughs> I'm on it. He's doing a great job with that. Uh, the, the, what, what I'm getting from NBA teams, every workout he's been in, I've gotten a call. They said he was the best player and they, uh, it was the best workout they had because the energy he brought and how competitive he made it. And then they finished with the, but he's five, seven. And I tell him at some point in time, if you got the guy who's the best player um, in all the workouts going around uh, five, seven doesn't need to matter anymore if he's the best player. And so believing that some team, whether they call his name in the draft or they sign him to a two way or give him an invite to camp, some team's going to bring him in. And if you give this kid a chance, uh, uh, I'm not going to bet against him. And so excited for Marquise and his family. And I mean, uh, he is, there should be a movie written, uh, done about this young fellow, man. Just the things he's overcome and, and his approach and the impact he's had on people's lives. Uh, he's yeah. a special one. And what's the help with recruiting you've been asking him for? Oh, man. You know, kids, kids, players tell the truth to each other. Right. And so sometimes uh, I can tell you something and, uh, you know, like I have to say it or it sounds good. And, you know, and but when they talk to each other, they tell the truth and, and guys know that. And I, I have no problem with anybody in our program speaking with a recruit because I, I want them to tell them the truth, because I don't want a kid to come here thinking under one pretense and it be something different. And so when you have an All-American guard, the Kuzi Award winner, talking to another guard about what it's like to, to play for me or be in this program, uh, I, I, I like those kind of conversations. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, one last question to Taylor Astridge, please. Or Go ahead, Taylor. Hey, Coach, uh, I was talking to uh, Paul Mills down here in Wichita, and he mentioned that you kind of helped him out with this uh, trip to – um his overseas trip this year i was wondering if you could expand on that and how that kind of uh, played out um you know we were planning to go to greece and uh and then after the uh ncaa tournament um the opportunity came about for us to go to israel and uh you know when you'd already started down the road going to greece and then this opportunity comes about you have to figure out a way to make it work. Well, Paul gets the Wichita State job. He wants to go on a foreign tour. I asked him if he, uh, you know, interested in going to Greece. And, uh, you know, we had already um, uh, put some money towards the trip that we would gear towards them. And uh, so it worked out well for them in the timing of the trip and uh, was able to help us in, in the timing of ours. And, um, you know, so it's, uh, you know, Paul, Paul's my guy, man. I, I just, he's, it's just any, anything I can do to help Paul, except on the nights we play each other, um, I, I'm, I'm willing to do. I just love him and his family. And, uh, you know, really, really great for this, our, our state, man, to have such terrific men leading the programs across the state. And, um, so yeah. Did you have to, yeah. Did you have to sell him on it or did he kind of jump on that? Uh, you know, I think, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't remember trying to sell him on it anything. I never want to, like, I mean, I think this is something he wanted to do and it worked out well in the timing of things. And um, it, it was best for his program because he's never going to do anything that's not, and I'm never going to ask him to. And so, you know, it, it turned out to be a, a good situation for both of us. Awesome. Thank you, coach. Thank you. Coach, we appreciate the time. I think that's all the questions for today. So we appreciate it. Um, good luck with all your summer recruiting. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. Go Cats.